Hello everyone, welcome to Build Your Own. My name is Gagan and I'm a fourth year medical student. I'm starting this YouTube channel to learn more things, to understand things related about medical stuff and to help others who want the same. So I'm starting with embryology today. Our first topic for today will be gonad development. Okay, so let's start. This is the overview by which steps we'll discuss the embryology section. At first, we'll discuss gametogenesis, then we'll discuss the next stage, fertilization, after that cleavage, and then implantation, and then we'll discuss how the two-layer embryo is formed, then after that, the three-layer embryo is formed, and then we'll discuss about the folding of body, how the structures are formed. So, if we consider that this is an embryo, there will be an elevation of the mesoderm, and it will form a urogenital ridge. This is urogenital ridge. This will give rise to a urinary and genital organs. Okay. Therefore, uh, the gonads will be formed from this. And if we say that this is the yolk sac and it has a lining of cells here. These cells are called primordial germ cells. Primordial germ cells. Primordial germ cells produces the gametes and these gametes then come into the embryo and into the urogenital tract ridge and this then gives rise to gonads. This then gives rise to gonads. The gonads are formed after the gametes are produced from the primordial germ cells then we'll discuss now if the gonads are testes or the ovaries. If there is a development of testes and the male reproductive system, there are further some factors which are responsible for the development of male reproductive system. The first one is sorry gene. Sorry, you can learn this by SR is for stands for short arm and Y stands for Y chromosome. Okay, and it is responsible for producing TDF testis determining factor. Then second is testosterone. We know that testosterone is produced by Leydig cells. Third is Mullerian inhibiting factor. Okay, now this is important as Mullerian duct. Mullerian duct is present in the, Mullerian duct is present in the females only. So if there is a Mullerian inhibiting factor, then it will uh, lead to the development of male reproductive system. So in males, Mullerian inhibiting factor is important for the development of the male reproductive system. And the fourth one is dihydrotestosterone. Okay, so these are the factors responsible for the development of testes and the male reproductive system. And for the development of ovary and the female reproductive system, we can say, it's very easy, we can, we can compare this to this and we can say that sorry gene is absent. Then second is testosterone. Instead of testosterone, another hormone produced by female reproductive system is estrogen. This is very important. Then third one is Mullerian inhibiting factor. As I told you that Mullerian duct is responsible for the development of female reproductive system. So there will be Mullerian stimulating factor. Or we can simply say that Mullerian duct is present. Okay. And the last one is dihydrotestosterone. This is also absent. And this, these four factors will lead to the development of ovary and the female reproductive system. And now we'll discuss about the first stage that we discussed in the overview of our embryology section, that is gametogenesis. In gametogenesis, uh, there occurs a process called meiosis. So we'll discuss the summary of meiosis and then we'll discuss individually spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Okay, at first we'll discuss about meiosis. Okay, so meiosis occurs in testes and ovaries. Testes and testes, it gives rise to uh, spermatogenesis, that is formation of sperms or spermatids and in ovary it gives rise to oogenesis which produces ovum okay so there are 
two stages of meiosis which is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1 there are certain steps that occur. The first one is synapsis. Synapsis is when the pairing of 46 homologous chromosomes occur. Then the second step is crossing over which is the ex exchange of the segments of the DNA and the third one is disjunction when the separation of 46 chromosomes occur and it gives rise to like, 2n gives rise to n and n and then meiosis 2 it's just like mitosis okay so uh, if we compare this to meiosis 1 then the synapses is absent crossing over is also absent but disjunction occurs and with centromere splitting so in this case diploid chromosome divided is, is divided into haploid and haploid chromosomes but in this case haploid chromosome gives haploid and haploid so this is the difference between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 now we'll discuss about spermatogenesis and oogenesis individually. Spermatogenesis. This is the process that occurs in testes. Okay. As we as we discussed that uh, from the yolk sac there were some. You remember from the embryo there was a yolk sac, and in the lining of those there were primordial germ cells, and these cells gives the germ cells to the embryo and it goes to the urogenital tract and then it forms the gonads so in the fourth week of pregnancy the primordial germ cells give the germ cells into the into the embryo and then these germ cells remain dormant until puberty after puberty these cells will become type a spermatogonia. Some of these type A spermatogonia will be converted into type B spermatogonia which has 46 chromosomes and is diploid. Then it undergoes meiosis 1. After undergoing meiosis 1 at first it forms primary spermatogonia. Primary spermatocyte. This primary spermatocyte will undergo three stages of meiosis 1 which were synapsis, crossing over and disjunction synapses, crossing over and disjunction and then it will form secondary spermatocyte. So you remember in meiosis 1 it was 2n and then it gave rise to haploid, haploid. So it will be 23 chromosomes and haploid. Okay. After this secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 2 which is just like mitosis. So meiosis 2 then it will it will give rise to haploid gamete. This is the secondary spermatocyte. This is the secondary spermatocyte. So each of them will give rise to individual gametes, which is haploid. Okay. So this is spermatogenesis, and now we'll discuss about oogenesis, which is in the ovaries. Ugonia has 46 chromosomes and is diploid. It then enters meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 and it becomes primary oocyte. Which is still diploid and has 46 chromosomes. It then undergoes three stages of meiosis which were which were what? Synapsis, crossing over and disjunction. And it then forms secondary oocyte okay so I want to state that uh, this primary oocyte primary oocyte are arrested in meiosis at the at the time of birth so after the girl reaches puberty the this primary oocyte is then converted into secondary oocyte and this secondary oocyte is excrete is excreted out via menstrual cycle every month so this is during menstrual cycle it will be ovulated so the egg that is ovulated during menstrual cycle it is the secondary oocyte it then after that if 
this egg if the secondary oocyte is fertilized then it will only if it is fertilized then it will enter the meiosis 2 which is again just like mitosis and the secondary oocyte has 23 chromosomes and is haploid just like in spermatogenesis it gives rise from 2n to haploid haploid this is meiosis 1 and after this after fertilization only if the secondary oocyte is fertilized only if then it will enter meiosis 2 stage which is just like mitosis and it will give rise to ovum okay so important point here is from primary oocyte suppose this is primary oocyte and it will give rise to secondary oocyte and a polar body a polar body will be very short will be very short because of the unequal distribution of cytoplasm nothing more like more than that just an unequal distribution of cytoplasm so only one secondary oocyte will be formed and this is polar body this is very small it has no function so it will disappear eventually it will die so there is no use of polar body then after this secondary oocyte then after it goes through meiosis 2 it will give rise to n ova and a secondary polar body this is primary polar body and this is secondary polar body again the reason is because of unequal distribution of cytoplasm and this is so small that it has no function at all so it will also disappear so only one ova will be considered after oogenesis okay so this is all for the first chapter today of gonad development this is the first section of embryology we'll discuss the next sections in the next video so for for the summary of today's video it will be like at first we discussed the overview of how we will go from the embryology section then we discussed about the development of gonads how they are developed like they develop from the primordial germ cells and then it goes to the urogenital ridge and then it gives rise to gonads then we discussed about how what factors are responsible for the development of testes and what are responsible for ovary or female reproductive system the factors that are responsible for testes are sorry gene which stands for short arm of y chromosome the, the third one is dihydrotestosterone then fourth is mullerian inhibiting factor again it is very important that mullerian duct is responsible for the formation of female reproductive system but mullerian inhibiting factor is responsible for the development of the male reproductive system then we discussed about the stages of meiosis which are meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 then after that we discussed individually about spermatogenesis and oogenesis we discussed that after in spermatogenesis primary spermatocyte gives rise to four, sp four sperms and in oogenesis primary oocyte gives rise to one ovum that's all for today thank you very much please subscribe my video and Keep motivating.